when Trump was first elected, some progressives feared that he would normalize the expressions of hate and prejudice. America would experience a, quote, preference ca ca cascade. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> preference cascade. <laughs> it's okay. Every time you mispronounce something, I feel better because I mispronounce stuff. And I'm always like, ah, oh, English is my second language. And when Susanna, Susanna who speaks English, do you speak anything else other than English? Um, not proficiently, no. <laughs> Good. So the, her only language is English. When she mispronounces something, you're like, hmm, I'm not that bad, I guess. Okay, Okay, I have <laughs> genuine learning disabilities. I, I'm dyslexic. Okay. Excuses, excuses. Go. <laughs> right, that's good. Okay. All right, good. Um, America would experience a preference cascade in which ordinary people change their opinions to align with prevailing social cues. The country would tack far to the right mm. far from moving to the right on key social and cultural issues such as immigration race relations and same-sex marriage however americans especially white americans have moved to the left the proportions of voters who believe that immigrants are good for the country that members of ethnic minorities suffer from significant discrimination and that everyone should enjoy the right to marry have all gone up Scholars have found that this counter reaction to Trump is no outlier. More often than not, public opinion moves against the president. For those who worry about illiberalism on the left uh, should take this pattern to heart. According to commentators such as Shapiro, progressives already hold power in universities and the mainstream media in Hollywood and Silicon Valley. If they also capture Congress and the White House, they would gain virtually unified control of American politics and culture. But fears of a Biden presidency leading to a woke takeover misunderstand the way that po public opinion moves in America. Because mm. Trump's ample failings have given the most misguided claims on the far left a su superficial veneer of plausibility, Trump himself has been the far left's biggest allies. Yes. Okay. This one more, one more time, but, <laughs> but slowly. Go on. <laughs> because Trump's ample failings have given the most misguided claims of the far left a superficial veneer of plausibility, Trump himself has been the far left's biggest ally. Exactly, exactly. This is what we have been saying for a very long time. And this, finally, we have somebody, so, uh, you know, again, when we say these things, people are like, yeah, I mean, but you know. But when you have an a, uh, article in the Atlantic published like this, people are like, the intellectuals are like, mm -hmm, maybe, maybe, oh, yeah, this is an Atlantic article. Like, is, this is not just a, like a YouTube live stream. Oh, 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 yeah, this must be right. So I'm glad that this is getting the attention that it deserves. Okay, but continue. And if... But, and if the Biden, Biden administration does overreach on key cultural issues, that will likely set the stage for a course correction, a cascade back to back. moderation. Yay. Again, uh, you know what? A lot of people, when, if, if Biden wins and the woke mob, I'm pretty sure they're going to manage to bully him a couple of times for him to give in to their demands. Okay. Yeah. And every time that happens, I'm pretty sure some of the our crowd is going to be like, Sermon, we warned you. We warned you. How do you like it now? How do you like it now? Okay. But again, I'm already admitting this right now that I know that Biden is probably going to give in to some things, some things, but it's not going to be as bad. It's not going to be as bad. Okay. But anyways, last sentence. Um, well, I also just wanted to say, like, I think this point is very good about if he does overreach, that will likely set the stage for a course correction, a cascade back to moderation. That's what we call regression to the mean. Mm. And this is what I'm into. Yes. Um, and also another thing, like, a lot of people are like, ah, oh, civility and politics is overrated. Who cares about civility and professionalism like these people are all the same all of, you know some people just speak better some people speak like trump um like some people speak like a buffoon but you know people are like oh we want somebody professional and civil like why who, why do we care about that we should only care about policies the problem is that if you bring somebody like trump or somebody like 
Kanye as a president, you you can't have most of the discussion of people c consuming politics is going to be about the latest I idiotic take. But like, it, they're not going to focus on po like you, what we want is we want if Biden is president because he's civil because he does it. I mean, he's going to have gaps. Unfortunately, that's going to get some distractions, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have like if but if you have somebody that doesn't talk like a buffoon and it's not a clown. Um, and it doesn't. It, it, the entertainment value of that is going to diminish, and people are going to be outraged or supporting policies more. So civility does matter, okay? Because the whole this the circus just distracts people from where they should pay attention to, right? So if you have a president that says, I don't know, grab them by the pussy or whatever, that's going to be. I mean, you think like that doesn't deserve attention? <laughs> no, it, that doesn't deserve attention. Um, his policies deserve attention, right? But the thing is that if he say if he keeps saying those things, most people, most of the energy of we need to direct people's energy into getting get into get to change the policies, right? But if you keep having if you run a circus as a president, then people are going to keep tr watching the clown show, and it's going to be hard for people to actually get people to get outraged about things that they should get outraged about. Like, for example, how many... Yeah, yeah, I, you know exactly what I was going to say, right? So, the number of people who are offended by Trump's, I don't know, stuff like grabbed them by a pussy is way, way higher than the number of people that are offended by Trump's um, support for Saudi Arabia's mm -hmm. bombing of civilians, okay? Mm -hmm. And obviously, one the the latter deserves a lot more outrage, right? Uh, so if maybe if Trump was more civil and professional, that would get more attention, right? So I do think civility Hopefully. and professionalism does matter because if you again, if you have a clown as a president like like a Kanye or like a Trump, more people that would distract people enough to not pay attention to things that deserve its attention. Okay, uh, but here, what is? Do you want to read the last sentence? If you want to combat illiberalism, casting a vote for Donald Trump is the worst possible thing you can do. Oof. That was good. If you want to combat illiberalism, casting a vote for Donald Trump is the worst possible thing you can do. Great. And speaking of, well, I'm not going to show it because if I show my ballot, you can see where I live. Oh, Okay. But I'm actually going to go vote for Biden right now. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. What are you going to... Oh, you're not going to... Okay. Well, your ballot is right in front of you? Yes. Can you show, not, not show the back? Not Is the back... Is both sides has... No. All, all of what's on the side will show a bunch of other oh. stuff about local districts okay. and things. Oh, okay. But I just well, voted for Biden. You and did? So that means... <laughs> what is it? Oh, that says I voted? Hold 